And he was one of the world's most famous performers, but he always had a close relationship with Ireland. He'll be fondly remembered for his sellout concerts in Cork and Dublin, as well as several other unadvertised visits here. It was the start of something special. Michael Jackson's relationship with Ireland. This was Cork in 1988. It was one of the best concerts I've ever seen. He was an absolutely incredible dancer. That moonwalk thing he did was uh, brilliant. Apart from concerts, Michael Jackson made other, less publicised trips here. He visited the Lambert Puppet Theatre in Dublin with his children 18 months ago. We did Jack and the Beanstalk and the children really loved it. We had sweets and... And, and, and lemonade and, <laughs> and and he really was so relaxed I, I found him such a charming person Bert Wright recalls another unexpected Jackson visit he was the manager of a bookstore in Dunleary when the superstar popped in at midnight he had his fedora on his face was covered with a some kind of a mask he had shades on and he was very soft-spoken uh, paid in uh, $100 bills and left At around 4 o'clock today, Michael Jackson emerged from his scheduled Aer Lingus flight from Paris. He made his way down the plane steps, holding a masked child's hand. His face and head were covered with a hood, baseball hat and a scarf. With him were at least two adults and two other mask-wearing children. They're believed to be Jackson's three children, Prince Michael, Prince Michael II and Paris. <laughs> Under the watchful eye of local Gardaí, Jackson and his travelling party made their way through immigration and boarded a silver Volkswagen minibus via the VIP. Michael came to Ireland in the summer of 2006. He'd been here before and increasingly found it to be a place where he could feel at home and escape the media frenzy that permanently surrounded him. He didn't want to be in the media centre because he felt it was too intense and he was too much under the microscope. Ireland became his sanctuary in the last few years of his life. He even contemplated making it his permanent home. He just loved Ireland for the people, the countryside. Um, it was just a nice place. He found peace there, loved it, and enjoyed it very, very fondly, absolutely. If Michael would have moved to Ireland, he would still be breathing today. And can you believe what the world's biggest megastar did when he got here? He went for a KFC, Chinese takeaway, and even took his kids to the local bowling alley. Michael came in here like any other visitor centre, just him and his group, they came up, they arrived at the reception counter here, and um, the guys told him they had to change their shoes if they wanted to go bowling. And the people that were here bowling looked at what looked like Michael Jackson, but I don't think anyone was really convinced that, you know, that this could be Michael Jackson on a Saturday night until more either. One of the mementos we kept of his night's visit here was, you know, was Michael Jackson's bowling shoes. Um, no one has worn them since uh, they were worn that night by Michael. A rare glimpse of family life for Michael Jackson. Three years ago, the superstar visited Jumpin' Jack's leisure complex in Tullamore. The CCTV footage has just been released now. Just before they, they arrived in with the children, they told me that it was Michael Jackson and his three children. So needless to say, we got a, a big surprise. Um, they arrived in and they were um, very ordinary and very friendly. Um, they came in and he got into the play unit and played with them and they just had um, great fun in, in the play centre. On the two occasions he visited the complex with his three children, it appeared to be a normal family outing and Jackson a doting father. Very friendly, very courteous, um, just seemed to be a guy that was happy, you know, to have a night out with the family, um, like anyone else would do here, uh, you know, there was no pressure on them and he could just, he, he just acted normal for the, for the three hours that were here, you know, just played, had their food, served his food to the kids and, you know, just, everyone just mixed and, you know, it was a very relaxed atmosphere there. The owner has kept the pair of size 9 bowling shoes worn by Michael Jackson that evening. They have never been worn since. you know about this? Yeah, we used to go bowling as kids. 
to a place called Kirkwood Bowling Alley in Studio City since the time he was about 14. This is in Los Angeles. In Los right? Angeles, yeah. So he always was loved he bowling. Was he good at bowling? Yeah, he was. And some. <laughs> and what about KFC? Did you get that? I, I was the one that told everybody that he used to go to KFC. We'd go there three to four times a week. He'd take off the skin and then say it's organic. <laughs> and then we'd get in food fights, and I'd take the mashed potatoes, throw them in his face, and he'd throw them right back at me. <laughs> and so. So what about Ireland? Did he ever talk to you about why he loved this place so much? He told me that he loved Ireland, that there was a special feeling tranquil because of all the green valleys and the fields and mm. the people. He loved nature, didn't he? He loved nature, he loved animals, and the people were so wonderful. He could be himself here and he could bring his children here. Really? He could relax? Yes. In a way that he couldn't relax anywhere else? True. Was, was he happy here? Very happy. He just loved it. Really? I think he would have eventually bought a home here. Fantastic. Well, he was mad into Irish history, um, you know, started getting into Irish music as well, um, and was very knowledgeable. You know, uh, he 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 wasn't living in a bubble. He was very aware of what was going on around the world, um, and but he was just so uh, relaxed, um, uh, and it was as I said, it was great that the Irish just left him alone. Michael and a surprisingly small entourage arrived at the exclusive 18th century Ballinacara house in the summer of 2007. With financial pressures and allegations about his personal life, Ballinacara offered an escape from the baying media. Michael. And it was something of a surprise visit. We had had a call and we knew that someone was coming down here to look at uh, the property with a view to staying for a little while. We didn't really know that it was Michael Jackson until the door uh, opened and out popped this superstar. I guess you could have pushed me over with a feather and it was like, who's this? Is this for real? With 22 bedrooms to choose from, Michael went for the Balinese themed suite. He decided that this was the room that he wanted to stay in because um, for the obvious reasons that the, the kids' playground was down here and he was writing his album here and been able to watch the kids and supervise them and have you know, a bit of enjoyment just seeing them having fun outside. Jackson soon settled into life at Ballinacara House. Though desperate for a normal existence for himself and his family, he did make the odd pop star demand. One of the most unusual requests which um, he made of us was to, um, at night time, would I put all the lights on in the property. I got a little bit intrigued by this, wondering what he was doing, and I popped my head through the hedge, and there was Michael Jackson moonwalking in the moonlight. It was quite a, an eerie scene, seeing this pop icon practicing his dance moves in our front garden here. Listening to Des, Michael's stay at Ballinacurra House was clearly a very happy time for both him and his children. He was beautiful, great to deal with, and very down to earth, which, you know, defies a lot of the um, so called image of the, these superstars in him as well. Michael Jackson paid a secret visit to Ireland. He stayed here for two weeks. He stayed in County Cork in a private hotel. Balnacurra House was the name of that hotel and its owner has never spoken about that visit until this morning. And he joins us now. Des McGahan, you're very welcome to the programme. Yes, good morning, Claire. How are you? I'm very well. Des, you haven't spoken about this because you weren't allowed to. Well, exactly. Uh, it was uh, part of the agreement. We had to do an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, because obviously uh, privacy was the big thing that he was looking for, and uh, you know, for a number of obvious reasons. So, yes, we uh, we had to keep that very quiet, and we were told by the manager if this ever came out that we'd be in a bit of trouble. And also, I think they respected the fact that we did keep it private, because uh, I think this what happens with a lot of um, these celebrities and superstars that go to hotels and various places and. Uh, the first thing the concierge does is ring up the uh, the media and say, guess who's staying here? But we had to be very careful, obviously. And you, you've decided to talk about it this morning on the news of his death. Um, tell us about the visit. Why did he go to Balnacurra House? Why was he in Cork? Well, um, he was thinking of moving his family here. Um, he had considered Ireland as a, as a you know an ideal location here to bring up his kids. And, I and what was he like? <laughs> that's the question everybody likes. I suppose everyone thinks, you know, it's all about the abnormalities, and I suppose one of the things that's, that was, uh, was very abnormal, he was more normal than we ever expected. Um, 
I mean, a lot of the things you hear and say, he, he was quite shy. Um, he, he was very particular about his privacy. Um, but I, I guess the thing that um, I guess surprised us most was the, the normality of his kids, the, the three most beautiful kids, you know, Prince, uh, Paris and Blanket. A lot of people here in Ireland could uh, learn a lesson about how to bring kids up from Michael Jackson. The kids were delightful, well-rounded, respectful, um, just beautiful kids. And the particular Paris became very friendly with my daughter, Scarly, and they were running around the place the whole time. My daughter didn't know who, who, who she was, who Michael Jackson was, and, and no one ever paid homage to the fact that he was really trying to look for a normal life. And he, I mean, you know, he was a pop star, a superstar, a pop giant at eight. Uh, I mean, how was he ever brought up normally? But he did make the big effort to, oh. to, to try and bring his kids up normal. And, and Des, when he was at Balnacurra House, did he just stay in his room? Was he wandering around? Was he having conversations <laughs> with you? Okay, well, we didn't know who was coming. We literally got a call and he, they called us and said, are you are you available? And luckily we were. And we, he said, we've got this, um, you know, um, celebrity that uh, would like to come and have a look at the place. They were just, but then he loved the place. He loved the privacy. He loved the, you know, he loved Kinsale, obviously, which is a beautiful place. But Again, I mean, he wanted simple things. Okay, a, a number of requests. First of all, and a lot of this was driven by his manager. Um, he didn't want. He wanted minimal staff, so we had to get rid of the majority of our staff. Had to get rid of our chefs and and various things like that. He would stay in um, uh, one of the dining rooms. Do- sleep in the dining room. No, no, he didn't. Well, that was where we had the breakfast. No, he took over one wing of the house, sort of thing. But the the, the thing was, my wife had pure, simple, home cooked food for him. Um, we had to go up and get Kentucky Fried Chicken and Chinese takeaways, which uh, a lot of people ask me what was he like, and I, um, I, I finished up feeling very, very sorry for him, uh, for all the, you know, all the brickbats and all the criticisms and all the litigation and all the abnormalities of his life. How could you be normal? But I found him to be absolutely, uh, you know, a, a wonderful gentleman, and uh, I was absolutely taken by the way that someone like him could bring up three beautiful children despite all the problems that uh, have been associated with his lifestyle.